12 hours of prayer, you know, no one keeps that whole regimen up. Larry Bingman starts the first four hours and watches over that from six to 10. Then I'm watching over the 10 to two and then Becky Ferris from the two to the uh, six. I'm, we're very conscious that there are those of you like online that were not able to be with us in the sanctuary. We have a lot of people that were in the sanctuary and they're not with us right now because they had to go on to their day. They're at home watching. But when, when we as a people, as, a, as the body of Christ in Jubilee, position our heart on a Wednesday to say this is the day of fasting and prayer. This is the day where we humble ourselves and look up and we call upon the name of the Lord and we, we uh, seek the, your face and we turn from the wicked, our wicked ways. There's, that is forever the fastest way of transformation because the humility factor, the time contribution, the prayer, it, the world's changing so fast, but my spiritual world's growing rapidly, overtaking the conflicts that are in the world right now. I am watching, literally, as the Lord begins to um, uh, generate uh, vision, revelation, prayer, uh, submission, trust, humility, expectancy, because... We're, we're, we're humbling ourselves and we're praying. So don't ever underestimate. It's not the easiest thing. Most, because in prayer, we learn to hear for ourselves. We, we learn to listen for the Holy Spirit instead of just listening to what someone's heard the Holy Spirit say and try to hear the Holy Spirit in the words that are being said. Now we're just all moving. The, someone's praying a prayer. Someone else reads a scripture. Someone else uh, uh, here's a scripture from that scripture and then that directs a little the prayer starts to move in this direction and then that builds and it cascades and next thing you know you I oh in in these settings and they're getting so supernaturally filled with life there's things that I had I didn't come in expecting to go this direction it wasn't my plan I wasn't going this is and I purposefully don't come with a plan to pray because I don't think in this setting of fasting and prayer are we petitioning to get God to do something for us. More so we are acknowledging where we are and we don't know what to do, but he knows how to do everything and he is the one we're after. And if he shows up, then all is, all, all is everything we need. So I just appreciate it. I, just, I, I, I wish for everyone, every believer will at the end of the age be a people of great prayer and great intercession. God will see to it. <laughs> He's not going to bring a whole bunch of people into the kingdom and say, okay, you know what, uh, you never had... You know, someone went... It's a, tra it's a transformation process and a learning curve for sure. But once you get a moment where you go, oh, I felt him, I heard him. And we were praying that today for everybody. Everyone here, everyone online, everyone who came, who couldn't come. That Lord, would you be gracious to cause a connection for everyone when we go to pray and may this day be a day where you awaken hearts whether it's just for a moment or even someone was so busy couldn't give a moment of time to pray but but they honored in their heart that this was a day to fast and pray and they with their heart gave permission for the body to go into prayer in pursuit without an agenda without telling what we want God to do for us but we asking God what do you want from us what are you doing? And we want to yield to that. That's why that, that blessed is you comes in the name of the Lord so struck me. So the, the thing, I'm going to ask Larry because you started at six. So the early bird gets the word. No. <laughs> but Larry Bingman, come on up and, and share. This was an open microphone. So you, you can come and testify to what you heard the Lord say or do. And we'll, we'll be able to then... Uh, Every time we hear what God said or was showing us, then we pray that for each other. And as far as our part, now we, we move this into a, a prayer receiving meeting. So you get, you get, and you pull, and you say, I'm taking that. That's what lambano means, to receive. It means to, it's not a passive, well, just put it in my hand, we'll see what I do with it. No, I want that. And that's where the faith really increases. And that's why this service becomes so powerful. So go, Larry.
please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I got to say, when you begin to play, glory, glory, glory to the name, I began to weep. This just a few minutes ago. I've not heard that song for a long time, but my spirit leapt within me. There are certain songs that elicit the leaping of the womb, <laughs> like John the Baptist did in Elizabeth's womb, and that made my baby jump in Jesus' name. So, oh, oh. so uh, that isn't what I began with, but that's what I began with tonight. <clears throat> Before everyone got here, it was 5.55. And so I thought, I'm going to look up that scripture. Who's got that? Isaiah's got that. And here's what I read. Isaiah 55, 5. That's what it says. Nations, surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations, I love this, who do not know you shall run mm -hmm. to you. Oh, 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 that's Jesus. <laughs> because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, that's Jesus, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon there are nations, there they are, that are going to be running to Jesus. Running, running to Jesus. And Jesus is going to touch those that Jesus knows everyone, but isn't known by God. But yet they come to Jesus by his grace and by his mercy. From there, we had to go to Revelation 14, the great harvest. Revelation 14, 14, one like the Son of Man. Well, that's Jesus, of course. He had a golden crown, and, the, and he had a big sickle. And he said, stick in the sickle and reap for the time of the harvest of the earth. It's time to reap. And he reaped it. And that goes with he's the ones that are running to him that don't know him, they're going to run to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then we switch to the anointing. We begin to pray for Brother Dan over there. And I got this, we got this word. It's the Passion Translation, Psalm 63, verse 5. It says, the anointing of your presence is my greatest mm. blessing. The anointing of your presence. And that's what we just had a few minutes ago. That's yeah. what I'm feeling right now. It's the sweet, sweet anointing mm -hmm. of the presence of the Spirit of God. There is nothing that satisfies like the anointing of his presence. Then we talked about the Holy Spirit, who is the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Jack Gray because they should be, they probably are leaving Heathrow at this point on their way back to the United States. Thank you, Jesus. And then Kristen, who is in our midst, is a graduate of Pepperdine. And she began to lament about Pepperdine. So we lifted up Pepperdine University, which is a Church of Christ University. And we said, Pepperdine will be a church for Christ, not of Christ, a church for Christ. And we ask Holy Spirit to overflow that university. And then we went further and we said, Lord, do it to Harvard, do it to Yale, do it to Princeton, mm -hmm. and now to Stanford, and to Berkeley, and USC. Father, overflow every university with the power and the presence and the sweet present of Jesus. Father, we want to see a revival, a great awakening come forth in the colleges and the universities all across America. And America will be transformed by the power that's in the name of Jesus as they awaken 
to righteousness and awaken to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. And then, since Brother West came, an hour early, two hours early, this Saturday, Brother West, Munyon right there, is doing an outreach via Zoom to Pakistan. So we begin to pray for the nation of Pakistan. And I'll be joining him at early morning on Saturday. And we declare that the Pakistanis' hearts will be open. They're Punjabis. I have been in the Punjab in India. But the Punjab is a region that's in both Pakistan and India. And they speak about the same language. They're the same people. They're just different nationalities. So we declare the Punjabi heart are being opened to the glory of God. The Spirit of God is overflowing them with love, grace, and mercy. Great miracles of healing, salvation will be manifest in our midst. We'll see 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people be swept into the kingdom of God because Jesus is meeting a nation that doesn't know it, but they will soon name the name of Jesus above any other name. And we declare that Pakistan is being invaded by the Spirit of God. An invasion is coming to that great nation called Pakistan. And as Pakistan goes, so will India. And so will... Uh, 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 um, the Tur Turkmenistan and Turkestan and Kazakhstan and Kazakhstan and all the stand nations. Mm -hmm. We declare the stand nation will stand up for Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And I declare that today. Shaman. The stand nations are going to stand up and be counted for Jesus. They're going to become from a goat nation to a sheep nation and say, yep. here I am, save me. They will call upon the name of the Lord because it is written, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we say, look out, stand. Nation. Look out, Eurasia. You're coming to Jesus Christ by the power that's in his glorious name. We release that upon you. We release that anointing upon each one of us to go forth and proclaim Jesus wherever he's called us to go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I receive that. Intentional receiving, intentional agreement, intentional pulling. That's what prayer s separates us from just being, a, being ones who are taught. Because now we're the ones that are the, doing the catching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wes, why don't you come up and share? Because you were in that beginning s session and then you came, out, came over and we had a, some really powerful times after 10 o'clock. Okay, you're going to... Okay, so you guys will go later. Brian, would you like to? Okay. Let me find my place here. But it was there were two points today, both earlier in the in the transition between Larry and and uh, Pastor, and then another time when I was in here and we were praying, and twice out of two different sets of scripture. One is. Um, Acts chapter 12, when starting in verse 5, and I won't read it, I'll just, I'll give you the, the point of it, and then we'll look at that, is that it's when Peter gets freed from the prison um, that he's held in uh, by Herod, by, and he's there by night, the next day he's going to be executed, and an angel comes, and, and it says quickly, immediately, mm. he went from being in the chains, to out of chains, to dressed, to to walking out of the prison, between the the, the the squads of soldiers, he went past the security twice, went out to the gate, and the iron gate opened of its own accord, and then went back and went into the city and was found. And he, you know how the story goes. He goes goes to a prayer meeting where they're praying for him, and they don't recognize it's him at first and, and the whole thing. So there was that point of, 
of freedom from prisons that would that would take us out of the 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 places of our stuckness of our bondage mm -hmm. of our of our captivity and it would take us out in in moments and it would bring us into places where where the the, the new place was unrecognizable to those that even knew us before and then the next place was uh, Acts chapter 16 and that's where where Paul and Silas are in prison and there comes an earthquake and they're, they're singing praise in the middle of the night and there comes an earthquake you know what happens the earthquake shakes and the foundation shakes and then the all the doors of the prisons are opened and then the jailer gets woken up because of the earthquake and fears for his life sees all the doors open fears is going to take his life and Paul says don't don't harm yourself we're all here and from that point then the jailer gets saved and his family gets saved wow, and they get baptized yeah. and 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 Paul and Silas get get tended to their to their uh, to their wounds and then there comes a feast so out of those two places of 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 prison and out of the 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 corresponding thing the Lord was just was just speaking that he's about to like like mm -hmm. the transition from Saul to Paul was instantaneous. These are instantaneous changes amongst that will, that, that the effect that God and the Holy Spirit and the movement on us, on, on the church, is going to affect those around us, like the jailer and that. So, Father, I thank you. And I just, again, I just, I speak that over, that you are in the midst, Lord, of taking things from, from our stuckness from our place from our circumstances and you're causing now rapid movement yeah. suddenly yeah. and quickly yeah. and you're taking us out of places yeah. that seem impossible for movement that seem that there is no way out and you're moving us rapidly past yeah. all obstacles all situations and you're moving us from there into the place father where things have changed where we change where others won't know it's us where we get where we get total rev people that are around us get saved and healed and delivered and baptized in moments because of the goodness of God in, the, in what you're doing by the Spirit in Jesus Christ and the movement that you have because of the, your great care and your great love, not only for the church, but also for all the world that needs to see you. So we receive, Lord, that, that, that rapid change to making all things new for, for quickly and, and, and overtaking us in all circumstances by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Praise God. I receive that. We receive that. I want to share, I had the most profound about an hour. And I, you know, I put everything as much as I can into my notes, so I'm, I'm in the midst of discovery in Scripture and by the Spirit and listening to the way prayer is being directed. And uh, there's this, there's this, I could feel Jesus, the intercessor, praying to restore all men to himself, bringing people from all walks of life. I think it might have even triggered at one point Wes was, or no, it was somebody else was praying about the father running to receive the prodigal, that God was running to welcome us. And then that's, you, you just shared that. And Larry, you talked about the colleges. So, so the, the running, the, the God, the, the product, the father saw the prodigal and he far off, but he ran to embrace him. But he didn't just embrace him, he received him, he clothed him, he gave him the, the sandals, the ring, and he started the party. So then the elder brother, who's been living in the father's house, but as a servant, not a son. He's been living bitter, frustrated, and it all flares up because of the kindness and the goodness that father's showing to his prodigal son. Now the elder brother refuses to come in. So this time the father goes out and implores his son, what's up? Why? And he said, you, you know, he's wasted everything of yours and he's lived in a, a 
a sinful life. I've been left to serve you. I've served you every day. I've never transgressed anything. And you never gave me anything. I didn't even get a goat to share with my friends. And yet he comes back and you make a party. So then the father is having to extend, wait a minute, this, you know, I've done you no wrong. You are always with me. And everything I have is yours, which was got to have been a ma major revelation because the son didn't see it that way. He thought he needed to earn his father's blessing. And if his father didn't choose to bless him, then it was, a, you know, it was a conflict. So he, I believe, he was reconciled. I believe the prodigal, the rebellious reconciled, and the religious reconciled back to God the Father. What, what, what came then, and I really want to pray this in because uh, we, we went into uh, so many places, but I'll just take you to this one scripture in Luke because we talked about the hearts, hearts being turned. And uh, he's, this is the Gabriel speaking to Zacharias, telling him of this son he's about to have. And he, he says, verse 13, the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. This is Luke 1, chapter 13. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. For he will be great in the sight of the... Uh, in the great in... He will, he will, for you will have, for you will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. So we think of, I was seeing this New Testament, New Covenant, 400 years after the first declaration in Malachi about the spirit of Elijah. And 600 years prior when Isaiah was prophesying of the forerunner coming in to make a path for the Lord. I see now here they were on the moment of its birthing. And, and the clarity was getting so brilliant even then. And I thought, oh, this is so much about how we're going to receive the Lord now. And how he is, what he's doing in his preparation for our receiving and his coming. So it says, he'll go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The word turn, because when I'm, when I'm in, the, in the spirit, I'm listening for, is that word significant? So I can take my concordance in my phone and, and, and look up a word and discover it's, it's more, you know, it's, it's original meaning. And I'm doing that. And the word turn isn't the kind of like turn and repent. It means like just spinning. You're going in the wrong, one, wrong direction and you just return to the direction you had started. The one you had known before. Just a bam. Turning to the heart. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. So all of a sudden, a father's heart to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. West gets into the prayer of all of the sons that have been hurt and wounded and offended, those who came up with giftings, stepped into their ministry, maybe in high school, maybe in college age, and they went forward and then they got hurt and they didn't, and then out of being hurt, they got out and they rejected and they stepped out of that place and they were going to, and they can't go on, they don't seem to get connected. And I'm hearing that son prayer and I'm hearing also the prayer of the fathers so in Malachi he says I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of the sons to the father but here in the new now 400 years later it's there's more revelation no he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children because father's hearts can be wounded and in the rejection of their sons and whoever that's and and their rejection of their faith the rejection and so it's kind of like okay well you go it alone you do it you're, you figure that out that's your choice i can't go chasing you and not all and and so there's just kind of god gets ready for something he says start turning the hearts of the fathers to the children of anticipation expectancy longing wanting desire 
And then the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Now, the, the word disobedient, again, these aren't the normal words that we, I'm always pulling up. So it's, I go, wow, that's disobedient uh, becomes, it, it basically means uh, to be contumacious, which means you're kind of unpersuadable and you're a bit stubborn. It's kind of not, I'm not into this. I'm not, you know, I'm just, no, thank you. So that happens to the hurt ones when they've been wounded in the house and they don't know how to go forward. So they just kind of say, forget it. I'm out of here. It's not my thing. I'm not a part of this. I'm just not going to respond. But all of a sudden, that choice, you know, because my, my, one of my mentors who taught deliverance, he said that what, what re rejection always brings resentment and resentment always brings rebellion. And when rebellion is in full swing, it's, there's, it's just going to go to seed. So the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Now the word wisdom, this is so crazy. This comes, it means the mental action or the activity or the, uh, the exercising of the mind of the just. So you have a person that said, I'm going it alone. I'm not doing this, you know, like we walk, we look about, I look at the millennial generation and I think, who raised you guys? I mean, other than friends and who, how I met your mother TV shows. I mean, where are you coming up with the mindset that's so not Bible, but it is so culturally community? So I go, well, that's something that, you know, it's just a place. But... But the, the wisdom of the just isn't the, oh, we know what you're supposed to do and you need to do it this way. It means that all of a sudden there's a people that are going, I, it isn't working trying to do it my own way. And it's not that others are got the way to do it, but there's this remnant of people that are going, I want to understand you, God. I'm setting my mind on the things above. I'm in pursuit of you. I'm, I, and all of a sudden the humility factor so from there, I, it was as though I could feel Jesus running, or I could see thousands of people being reconciled in instant moments. Pain, loss, suffering, failure, and so hearts of fathers that had grown hardened to the situation. I'm not going to be a part of this, because we're so much like it was when I was a kid, a teenager in the 20s, the 70s. You know, it was, you know, it was this big divide. America, love it or leave it, you know, fix it or lose it, you know, it was just this, this conflict, and you would think the parents were going, what happened, and where did you, how did you get to where you were, it was just a, it was a moment for Christ to enter in, it wasn't to be religious, and it was him coming, and then all of a sudden there's this, I know in my heart, I'm just going, I just, I want to understand the ways of God, and I value those who are in pursuit of him, and intentionally in pursuit, and, and those who are all of a sudden going to say, come on in, we receive you. And, and we're not here to control you, and we're not here to change you. We're here just to welcome the Jesus that's coming alive in you. And so that, you could feel it. I could, I would go, I mean, I, I could feel it. I could see it. And I know when I feel and see things like that in a prayer time, it's because Jesus is, his intercession starting to come out. That's going to save many, release the uttermost salvation. And so then we had fathers saying, Lord, help us so when they come, we won't re reject them because of the same way it was with the Jesus movement. Nobody wanted to receive them because they weren't the way they were coming, the way they were expecting them. But then they became the great, you know, they're just open doors. You know, the Barnabas. We, we got into the Paul, Saul of Tarsus conversion because he was a terrorist. But then he's, we hit that about three different times in different moments from different people. Here he was a terrorist, and now he's converted. But then Ananias has, get, has a vision, but he has to, re hey, he's telling God, the man I know about is not the man you want me to go baptize in water and the Holy Spirit. And God's saying, stop it. I've chosen this one, and I've got a purpose. You go. He's seen you in a vision. Then Barnabas is receiving him. So, I want to bless us right now for a supernatural reconciliation. It, this is what I saw, that the ambassadors for Christ, the reconciling men to God, and God who's already been reconciled to the world through his son. Father, in Jesus' name, 
I have never felt and felt the layers of movement in years and decades. This is not about attracting people through their flesh and uh, appealing to people in their lust and helping people in their woundedness. This is conversion. This is the turning, the swift movement, like from Saul's of Tarsus to Paul's of the Apostles, and like those in rebellion to those returning, and those who have been held up and no longer know how to open up, open up and, and have hearts full of life. I saw people that come and haven't seen one another for 20, 30 years and they go, oh, I'm, I'm just, I want to be back. And yeah, I want what you are back and here we are. And just love immediately, transference, miracles, signs and wonders, revival, reconciliation, ambassadorship, evangelism. That isn't, we must go get them and convince them. It's people being convicted and trying to find their way in and us opening the door and say, come on in. And us going out and saying, yeah, we know where you, you, we know where your home is. Come on home with us. And it's not about one has to be wrong and the other has to be right. Everybody's wrong and only Jesus is right. We declare this lordship of Jesus to clown. Oh, and Lord God, the, the thing was that you said, don't make excuses when I start speaking with my voice and call people into my party. Don't make excuses and tell me uh, you've got this to do and that to do and you don't need to do this. This call of prayer is the precursor to the party of God to start the, re- the awakening of God as thousands and millions of spirit souls come alive to faith from outside, inside, from rebellion to religion, all places in between. So Lord Jesus, we hear this charge and we hear your intercession and we join in faith as kings and priests on earth to reign, to see this. We say yes and amen. We say we will not judge what is being done because it doesn't fit the criteria the way we want it to be done. We will not reject what you accept. We will not call unclean what you've made clean, even if it doesn't fit the, the kosher of how we would receive it. Do it again. Do it again. Another way, bigger way, beyond anything we've ever seen. Not a repeat of the past, but the brand new, the grand finale of the coming of the Lord, the appearing of Jesus Christ. We receive you coming, even now, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Becky. Wow. take a lot of time because I really want um, Wes and Deborah to come on up. And Courtney, I want you to come up for a second. We, we prayed for revival. We prayed for our sons and daughters. We prayed for, you guys can come on up. Yeah. And we prayed for everything Pastor just said. It, it was cracking wow. me up when he was talking. I said, oh my gosh, it was like he was in our prayer meeting. <laughs> It just kept getting stronger and stronger. The declarations that started coming out were outrageous. We could feel the power of God in the declaration of his word. You know, he, he, uh, that scripture of um, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Well, the blood of the lamb is applied in our testimony. When we say what God is saying, that's our declaration. When we say the word of God, what he is profess- proclaiming to us, when we come into agreement with it, it's as if we have hyssop and we're, we're putting the, the blood on the door and saying, now, Lord God, I am an overcomer because of what you did and where you sit and where I sit in Christ. I asked these, these to come up. Um, Courtney had, Courtney had a, a really interesting thing that happened. I've never, I've never experienced this before, and I thought it was so neat. It's, it's something God is doing right now. When he releases the gifts of the Holy Spirit, don't expect them to look the way 10 years ago looked when we released the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They'll be real different. And she had a revelation of something when we, when we said, uh, oh, magnify the Lord. She got a revelation of that word magnify that I had never gotten before. I thought only that it meant to make big. But this is what the Lord told her. So 
she must have said magnify like nine or ten times, and I'm thinking, why does she keep saying this? And I'm trying to envision like fireworks going off, and we're praising God. And then um, it hit me. I'm a science teacher, so I started thinking of magnets. When you magnify the Lord, it's like a magnet. Um, you go towards the Lord. So Pastor Steve's kind of been talking about that, getting closer to the Lord, like going towards the Lord. And we naturally do that. That's the whole point. When we're magnifying the Lord, he doesn't need it. We're the ones who are like a magnet towards him when we magnify him. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and release that. Just oh. declare it. Yeah. So I release the blessing of um, the freedom to magnify the Lord the way it feels like we should do it to, to the Lord, our God, that we know as a friend, as our Savior. Um, I pray that everyone feels liberty to just open up and um, praise you the way they need to praise you to get closer to you in the way that they need to get closer to you because it's about you loving us and you want us close to you. You want us to be a magnet towards you. In Jesus' name. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Receive that, receive that. Yeah, Another Court. thing that happened was, um, I know Ali did a prayer, and then somebody else said that you were saying that to me, weren't you? Did you know? You know, and, and it was happening that way throughout our prayers. Somebody said, oh my gosh, that was, you, you knew that about me, right? The gifts of the Spirit are so evident when we are proclaiming the Word of God out loud with our mouth. How long has Pastor been trying to get us to say with our mouth, not just in our head? And, you know, we all say, uh-huh, uh-huh. But how many of us know that when we actually do it, there is something happening, the atmosphere is changing, there is an authority coming that cannot come except through our, our vocal voice, actually agreeing with God and proclaiming what he said. Now, I asked Wes to come in because we had something in prayer. It was only one line, but then he, the Lord gave him a whole bunch of declarations. And I made a slide out of them. He's going to proclaim them over us, but we're going to join him. So when he starts, if we could stand up, and that's your impartation, that it'll come out of your own mouth, mm -hmm. And then um, uh, uh, Deborah is going to lead us in a song. And it's just the chorus that everybody knows, especially if you're, you know, close to my age. So we're, we're, we're just, just be in agreement. Just yeah. say, yeah. I am, I am here for a miracle, a sign, and a wonder. Yeah. That's the presence of God. That's the thing that he's going to do for us that we cannot do for ourselves. That's the magnification of who he is in our own lives, to actually see him, not just talk about seeing him, but actually see him face to face, eye to eye. So I, I'm, I'm just going to ask Wes. To, can, go ahead. can I interject before Wes? You can get ready to come up. But um, Courtney, when I was thinking about your dad and your mom, you know, Sam and Teresa, and welcome, Carpenters, and those online and us in this room, and what you just said about signs, wonders, and miracles. It says in Hebrews 2, verse 1, and I feel like this is why we do activate a believing heart with a confessing mouth, and we should expect God's drawing us as magnets to receive what we're being drawn into, to, to really be affected by that pull. It says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we've heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, this was the covenant that Moses brought, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? Jesus, imagine the courage that man, the son of God, but a son of man, when he started to say, this day, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I am he. I am he who speaks to you. He, he was the first to begin to declare this great salvation and was confirmed to us by those who heard him, the apostles, 
We were ate with him and drank with him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. So when you make the declarations and lead us, I'm expecting that kind of power play. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, so we're going to go to this declaration. Becky only had to say one thing. The king on the throne does not have nails in his hands, but he does have a crown on his head. Mm -hmm. And this huge download came. So here we are, mm -hmm. and we're going to magnify the king of glory together. So we're going to start it out with the king on the throne does not, not have, have nails, nails in, his, in hands, his hands, but he does, does have, have a crown, a crown on, on his head. head. The king, king on, on the throne, throne does, does not have wood on his back, back. but he does, does have, have a, a rainbow, rainbow shining, shining like, like an emerald, emerald behind him as he sits at the right, right hand, hand of God. God. The king, king on, on the, the throne, throne does, does not, not have mockers and scoffers around him jeering, mm -hmm. but he does, does have 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels declaring his worthiness. The king on the throne is not hanging naked in agony, but he is clothed in majesty. The king on the throne isn't weeping out water and sodium, but fire drops are pouring out of his eyes like liquid lava gushing on hearts all around the globe. The king on the throne isn't in between two thieves, but he's in the midst of the throne, above the circle of the earth, surrounded by four living creatures and elders. The king on the throne doesn't have his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth, but he does have a sharp two-edged sword coming out. The king on the throne isn't bleeding profusely, but he is seated on the mercy seat with his victorious blood that speaks better things. The king on the throne does not have a plaque that says the king of the Jews above his head, but he does have hair white as wool that's causing sin that's like scarlet to be white as snow. The king on the throne is not suffering in the place of the skull, but he is making all his enemies his footstool from his seat of rule. Yeah. The king on the throne is not being pierced for our transgressions, but he does have holes where the nails and spear went in that have opened the new and living way. The king on the throne is not dying on a tree, but he's alive from the dead with the keys of death and Hades. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa. This song, like, let your glory fall into the, uh, in this room. Let it go forth from this nation. Um, let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face. So that's the chorus we had. Um, so we're going to just sing because we want to invite everybody to come into that experience because we actually really experience the glory. And, um, and after this, at the end of it, as we were singing, we saw like, you know, something actually coming down on us like glory, like a fragrance. So we want everybody just to sing it and experience that with us. And um, I just feel as I was standing up here, I was, I, but I just feel the Lord has something for us. He's gathering us. And this prayer meeting is not to give him orders and tell him what we want him to do. I came in a little bit earlier today and I sense that it's such a waiting place. Like, waiting and we are here for his pleasure we're not here to seek him to please us anymore uh, we don't have a prayer list for him to answer and we all came with our praises and we all came here just wait and we just come here to seek his face that's why this song came like we really gather here just to see his face and i just sense the lord is actually preparing us gathering his vessel gathering his people like pastor steve was saying the lord will prepare people he's preparing us for something and the something is bigger than all any of us can imagine i when i stood up here i saw something god has in mind so much bigger than we expected we have no idea how big it, this thing is I, you have no idea i i just you have no idea. we have no idea we have no idea. I just want to declare God has something so big, so glorious, good or bad. I'm not promising good, but I sense he's going to come with his ways. And it's so much bigger than any of us 
are here imagining right now. Yeah. And yeah. it's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Lord, we thank you. You are glorious, the king of glory, as we declare you today in the sanctuary. And your glory is so big that you cannot be content in this place alone, God. So we lift up your name. We thank you. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go, go forth from, from here, here to, to the, the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place. As we gather to seek your face. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place. As we gather to seek your face. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place. As we gather to seek your face. Lord, we gather to seek your face. Lord, we gather to seek your face. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we would hear the, the ancient prayer and promise made, prayer of Solomon and the promise made by you. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. We do lift up the exalted Christ, the high priest of our confession. We Hold him as the highest one, the one who is with one sacrifice and one offering perfected forever those who are sanctified in him. Praise you, Jesus, for your capacity to save, heal, and deliver your salvation so beyond what we have ever yet tasted and touched. Your intercession calling us to salvation and to the uttermost height, the uttermost expression of the fullness of salvation. Praise you, Jesus. We do seek your face. It is our honor to humble ourselves on Wednesdays to seek your face. It is our honor and it is right of us to come and bow before you. We have all the world's problems and all of the church problems and all of family problems and all of the issues of life. But you said one thing was necessary. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. So we now receive the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the help of heaven, the demonstration of Jesus Christ, this great salvation. We receive it at home, online. For those who watch on demand later, we receive it in the sanctuary. We extend it to the ladies as they gather for dinner tomorrow night. May miracles abound and signs and wonders break open. May it happen on Sunday when you speak of perfection that you brought forth through your, reser through your sacrifice. We thank Thank you for this moment we're in. We declare you are the great reconciler and now called us as ambassadors for Christ to reconcile the world to you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Reach out. 
there are there is there is like a open heaven coming over homes and open heaven coming over minds and visions that are opening up and there's revelation that is now being released and the spirit of wisdom and revelation is breaking open for the eyes to understanding and to under to see and know God and to see the hope of our calling and the riches of his the glory of his inheritance and the greatness of his power that he demonstrated in the resurrection of his son hallelujah hallelujah there are miracles there are prodigals that are right now having conversations with truth and they're making up their mind that it is dumb for me to live in out, out, ex, uh, exile and rebellion when I could return to my father's house even though I must approach in humility I'd rather be humble as a servant than to live in my arrogance there are elder brothers that are wondering what is this all about I work so hard but have so little I need to return to God my father and know him as my father and not as my boss there are there is a God there's fathers that are starting to, to have a stirring my son's coming my children are returning there are there is awakening happening and there's a hearts that are turning hearts that are turning and there's the disobedient turning to the wisdom of the just there's the hearts of the fathers turning to the children there are people being prepared for the coming of the Lord yes yes Miracles. We thank you for the Ahare la boca ba 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 saba. We receive this work. Mm -hmm. See, we're right in this. We, we're touching this before it can be seen. We're touching the unseen before it is seen by all. Oh, thank you for this honor. Thank you, Jubilee. Thank you, Fountain of Christ in Jubilee online. Thank you all. Thank you all.